Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to a video brought to you at the speed of light by Squarespace. At least I think it's the speed of light if I have some basic understanding of how electrical cables and internet works. Uh, actually, now I'm doubting myself. I mean, yes, definitely if you have fiber optic connection, some part of it is probably at the speed of light, but I don't know about, I mean, I actually, I'm like 90% sure electrical signals travel at the speed of light, don't they? But there's something about it that's way slower. Maybe it's the computing processing power. I mean, some <laughs> there's definitely parts of my computer that are not working at the speed of light. It chugs and turns sometimes for sure. Anyways, uh, look, what are you doing? Huh? Well, I guess you're watching a video right now, but what were you doing before that? Chilling? Were you at work? Relaxing? Playing a video game, watching TV, picking your nose, lying down, sitting up, standing, walking. Anyways, I don't know why I'm so curious. For some reason, I feel like I have this little... <sighs> my videos are like little tendrils reaching out into the world. And then they... When everyone... Every, every time someone watches one of my videos, it's like one of my tendrils is touching someone. But it's at this one little infinitely small point. I'm touching someone else's life. And I just, I'm so curious about all the other points where I'm not touching them. Like, what are they, what are people doing before and after they watch one of my videos? Because I know what they're doing when they're watching one of my videos. Well, they're watching one of my videos. And that's cool, right? Because that's a, that's a two-way connection. I'm talking to you. I'm drawing, you're listening and watching. It's not happening at the same time. It's what my professors would call asynchronous. Uh, some of our classes are like that, but anyways, I don't know, I guess I'm just looking for more. It's okay. Anyway, some of you have been very nice, sending me some messages, posting on Instagram, asking me if I'm okay uh, due to the recent hurricane that came through North Carolina. Yes, I am okay. I'm about two hours east, a two hour drive east of where the worst of it hit up near the more mountainous region of, of North Carolina. I mean, it's not very often you, I mean, usually you think about, you know, hurricanes messing up coastal areas, but I guess it was more the uh, flooding, landslides, uh, all this sort of crazy, I think that maybe some dams broke up around uh, the mountainy, more mountainous area of North Carolina. And uh, really it's like, it seems like whole, some whole towns have been washed away. So I made a couple of uh, donations to uh, an individual and some disa a disaster relief program. And so of course I want to tell you, or at least ask you to make some donations of your own. But, uh, you know, I, I personally am feeling, feeling this is a, as a more personal issue because it's close to me. So I'll understand if you don't, but just know you have kind of made uh, a donation of your own through me because the money I donated is kind of the money that I've made from you supporting me. So thank you. I appreciate it. Also, in this video, you'll notice that I try to use some of the methods and techniques that I espoused in my recent video about how to add more depth to your doodles. I mean, in this drawing, I just kind of I wouldn't leave it alone. I kept going back over and over again to areas that I thought I kind of thought I had finished. I kind of kept on going back to them, adding more and more kind of texture, darkness, and uh, making certain areas of it much more darker, much more, much more darkerer than I normally would have. And I think I like the result. I mean, it's a constant learning process, and you just kind of kind of reflect on each drawing and move on to the next one. Okay, let's do our sponsor doodle. Make sure you go check out Squarespace, see what they can do for you as far as making your own website. They've got a lot of great features. For example, there's a lot of ways to take payments. Uh, if you're trying to get paid from a customer, they, there's a lot of different payment methods like Klarna, ACH Direct Debit, Apple Pay, Afterpay, ClearPay. Squarespace works with all of these. Whatever you've got going that is more, most convenient for you, it seamlessly integrates with Squarespace, plus, you can set up your online store, get the e-commerce working, and uh, I don't know if it's little things you're making, uh, maybe some ceramic, maybe you're a, a photographer. Let's get it rolling. Sell some stuff. 
support yourself through your art. That's what I'm trying to do. And uh, it's working pretty good. Okay. I believe in you. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter draws for 10% off your first website or domain. Uh, you know, I went to this, I went to this dinner recently. It was like, um, I don't know if it was like a fundraiser dinner or something. It was for this local arts foundation that I had done some work with. Uh, th- me and a, f- a friend of mine had done gotten like some a little bit of grant money from them uh, when we did uh, this little thing we did called Bach to the Drawing Board. My friend Carl Ronovic, he's a member of the Greensboro Symphony Orchestra, and he would play some Bach cello uh, concertos, I think maybe, or cello movements, something. And then I would do these live drawings. He He's actually the one who applied for these grants from this uh, arts council and and he gave me some of the money because I did like he gave me half the money because I did half the performance with him uh, but then somehow I got invited to to this like appreciation dinner and downtown Greensboro has this new well, relatively new performing arts center where they do like all these like like operas and musicals and stuff and they have and they set up all these big tables these fancy tables and there were like waiters walking around with hors d'oeuvres and stuff and uh, I got invited because I I had like received money right from them and I didn't really know what I was doing there I felt out of place I went uh and I didn't know anyone there because Carl didn't go because he had some some uh, gig to play cello at and I didn't have anything better to do so I was like yeah I'll go and I went and they gave me a name tag that said like Peter Delegdish uh, like uh, artist grant uh, receive receiver or something like that to show that you know like hey we gave this guy money even though they didn't really they gave Carl money and Carl gave me money anyways it's a technicality Regardless, I went there and I sat around just kind of looking at everyone. There were like a hundred or two people there and I was just like, what am I doing here? And then eventually, after like an hour, look, I feel bad complaining. Okay, it's a bad look, me complaining, even though A, they did give me money and B, it's a free event where I got free food. The hors d'oeuvres were pretty good, but I just felt out of place. Like, I don't know what the difference would have been if I hadn't been there besides the fact that I wouldn't have gotten the free, um, like the, the, uh, it was like, I don't know, it was like chicken wrapped in bacon. Those are really good. (laughs) Actually, maybe that did make it all worth it. They had this speech where they were like, of course, the thanking the people they really should have been thanking all the people, all the big donors and people who made it possible, all the people who did all the hard work. I mean, I am thankful, thankful of course, for all the donors because obviously people who support the arts in cities like this, you know, um, are amazing. I'm not trying to complain about all that. But then the weirdest thing happened. I was sitting there feeling kind of lost and out of place, sitting at a table with some other people I didn't know, just kind of watching people talk. And then I looked at the program, and on the front of this uh, big glossy program they had was a picture, uh, was was my hand, a photo they took at, at, at one of the gigs I did at, at a different one of their fundraiser dinners of my hand, uh, holding a little stick of charcoal, drawing on this um, easel. When outside of the frame would have been Carl playing on the cello. I was like, hey, that's me. So I guess that did make me fit in, feel like I fit in a little bit more, knowing that, hey, like, hey, my picture is on the main thing. And before the event started, they did have some, like, TVs playing slides, and there was a picture of me and Carl doing one of our events. I don't know. I don't even know why I'm telling you all this, except that it was weird. And then, as awkward as I felt, um, this guy got up and he gave a speech. He was like a, a, some kind of musician. And he gave up and gave this speech. And I don't know what came over me, but he was giving this talk about how he had been like a, I don't know, his, <laughs> it was so random. His, I think his mom or his aunt or something was Rhiannon Giddens. Do you know who that is? Some some musician. 
And he was talking about how he went through all these stages in his artistic life, you know, not knowing where he fit in, finally fitting a little more, going through this stage, that stage, so on and so forth. A lot, I guess a lot of what he said was resonating with me. And I think he was just a really good speaker, maybe because he used, he went to theater school. Maybe that is really what helped. I don't know if it's part of what he was saying or how he was saying it. Maybe he was just a good at connecting with people. And I found myself starting to cry. That, that was the most bizarre part of the whole night. I was sitting there feeling kind of annoyed at myself for going or just kind of, you know, depressed and lonely because I didn't know anyone there. I wasn't really talking to anyone. I mean, which is kind of my fault. I could have struck up conversations with people. I could have had a great time if I just started talking to everyone because I'm sure everyone there were cool people. I mean, they're all associated with art. They're either artists or supporting artists or, I mean, they're all incredible people. It was my fault for being, you know, sultry and pouty. But anyways, he was talking and I was crying and there were people all around me also watching him talk and I didn't even know why I was crying. It's not like he was talking about anything sad and I'm just like trying to like subtly, you know, like mop away my tears and then just more tears were coming and, ugh. and then at the end I did end up talking with a few, a, a few people there. They were all very nice. I talked with two or three people there before and after the uh, little speech slash dinner slash whatever it was. And then at the end, I was like, oh, I got to go talk to this guy and thank him. But <laughs> uh, he was, I think it was clear he was just trying to leave, which I can't blame him for. I was like, I was like, hey, thank you so much for that talk. Uh, and I mean, I was like, hey, it really resonated with me. I was like, something about what you said about how, uh, I don't know, like, you know, at first you don't really know where you fit in, but then you find something. And I don't really know what I said with him, but I feel like, and he was like, thanks, bro. And <laughs> that was it. And at first I was annoyed. Um, but I think, you know, that's not really on him. He gave a good speech and he can't be really expected to, um, you know, have to connect with. And also, you know, there's no burden on him to also uh, have to connect and resonate with every single person who comes up with him afterwards, especially I'm sure he was he 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 clearly gave everything he had in the speech itself. So, you know, I think I'm just thankful for that speech. I don't even remember exactly what he said. I just remember how it made me feel. I think that's good enough for me. And that that in itself, I think, made the night worth it. I wish I remember what he said. I think what I can take away from it is to persevere. If you see opportunities, take them, even if they're different than what you planned on or expected. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, thanks for listening, everyone. I don't know if anything I just said made sense, but hope you're all doing all right. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.